All right, so this is it, right? <laughs> um, it's a lot. So the first thing I want to talk about is this last section, we're going to talk about solving for time and for solving for the rates. So because if we know how what our monthly payment is or our loan amount um, and the interest rate, and we want to know how long it will take, then it gives us an idea of what type of loan we can get, a five-year, three-year, seven-year, 30-year, and some things like that. So I think the most important thing to realize here is the scenario. So we're either going to have many payments, uh, many deposits, many withdrawals, one deposit, one deposit, one time interest, right? So we have all these scenarios, but in order to do this section, we really need to determine the formulas and the scenarios. So I made this flow chart and it should be in your, your folder for chapter seven. And you can click it and you can see that it's a two page handout and it's a flow chart and it's really awesome because if you know that you're making, for example, many deposits, then I know that I'm going to have an annuity. And then I know I'm making deposits every month, every week, whatever. And the total amount is given to us by this formula. But if I needed to know the amount of each deposit, I, re I put the formula and rewrote it. Let's say I was making one deposit. I would come here and determine if it was one time interest, interest over time, or compound interest. Let's say it was simple interest over five years. I would do one deposit, interest over time, which is simple interest, and I could use this to calculate the interest or this to calculate the amount. Let's say I knew I was making many payments. I knew that this had to be a loan and I was making payments every time period. This is the total amount of the loan formula, and this is the amount of each payment formula. So these are really good um, flow charts to use. For this section, we're going to use the second page, and the second page states that we're gonna find rate or time. So we first have to determine the scenario, whether it's one deposit, many deposits, many withdrawals, or many payments. You can see that the scenarios are the same over there, except now we have to see what we're looking for. If I was making many deposits, I know it's an annuity, and I know that I'm making deposits every time period. Therefore, if I wanted to find the number of years for the loan, I can use this formula. And the log is just a log on the button. I mean, on the button on the calculator. <laughs> if I was making many payments, right, I would know that if I make many payments, I'm taking out a loan and I'm making payments every time period. And in order to find the number of years I'm making the payments, I can use this formula. So these formulas are really helpful um, when it comes to these problems. So for example, let's go ahead and go up here. Joel is considering putting a $1,000 laptop purchase on his credit card, which it has an interest rate of 12% compounded monthly. How long will it take him to pay off the purchase if he makes payments of $30 a month? So we ask ourselves, which scenario is it? He buys a $1,000 laptop and then he's gonna pay it off. Is this many payment, uh, many deposits, many withdrawals, many payments, or one time deposit? So I can see that his the word payment is in there. So he makes a one time purchase, but he's making payments $30 a month. So the payment is one thing, and then we know it's many payments. And he, if he makes $30 a month, pays $30 a month to the credit card company, how long will it take to pay it off? So how long means we're going to find N. Okay, so I know that the fact that it tells me that I'm going to have many payments, let me go back to my flow chart to the second page and I say, okay, I'm going to have many payments with the loan and the 
formula to find how many years I would be paying this off at $30 a month or Joel would be paying it off is this formula right here. So let me go ahead and try to clip it. Copy. And so here's the formula. Now I need to know these parameters. Let's go ahead and write them down. So R is equal to the rate, which is 12% or 0.12. P sub zero is the original amount of the laptop, which was $1,000. Um, and N or K would be the monthly payment, so 12 times a year. And N is the number of years, which we don't know. So now there's our appendix. Let's go ahead and plug and chug. So n will be equal to log, which is just a button on our calculator. Don't don't uh, get nervous. One minus r, so 0 0.12 times p sub zero, 1,000 divided by the monthly payment d, which was $30 times K, which is 12 times per year, divided by negative K, so negative 12 times per year, log 1 plus the rate 0.12 over K, which is 12. Now, I know you see the log, but don't be alarmed. Log is just a button on the calculator. If you want to know all about logs, I can send you a module all about logarithms. But all you need to know about logs now is that it's a button on your calculator and all you're trying to get out is how long you're going to be, uh, Joel's going to take to pay this laptop off. Okay, log button is usually uh, around this last column on the left. You usually will see log literally L-O-G and it's always on this far left column of your calculator. And so if you um, do this, we can hit log. Notice it prompts for the parentheses. One minus, and then we can go ahead and do the parentheses on the quotient of 0 0.12 times 1,000 divided by parentheses 30 times 12 parentheses, parentheses for the fraction, and parentheses for the log. And divide that by parentheses, negative 12, log, so the log again is on this left column, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 12. Okay, so close the log argument right there and then close the denominator and hit enter. Um, and we usually, once again, the rule of thumb is always to round one decimal place past our data. So in our case, everything's pretty much in whole numbers, even the percentage, so we'll round to the nearest tenth. So 3.3 .3 and 9 is our test digit, which is above 5, so it'll be 3.4. And remember, this was n. So this means that it will take Joel 3.4 years to pay off his laptop. And that's all there is to it. So it's really, this section I like because it's really about identifying the scenario. And once you can identify the scenario, you can go to that flow chart and use the, um, the formulas off the flow chart. So let's try another one. The next one is Pat deposits 6,000 6, into an account earning 4% interest compounded monthly. How long will it take the account to grow to 10,000? So we have to ask ourselves, is this a one deposit, 
um, many deposits, many payments, many withdrawals. Well, I do see the word deposit, but I only see one deposit that I'm letting sit there and grow into um, this amount of 10,000. So I know that it's compounded monthly. So this is the red flag, right? That I know it's a deposit, but then I ask, is it one deposit or many deposits? And I can see that now this is gonna be compound interest, which is one deposit that grows over time. And then we know how long. So we know we're supposed to find N. So let's go ahead and go down there to our flow chart. And we determine the scenario to be one deposit with compound interest, with one deposit earning interest off interest, and then there's the formula we use. So let me go ahead and grab the formula. And we can go ahead and find the parameters. So the first thing we need to note is that um, the initial deposit is $6,000 and we want it to grow to $10,000. So that's our piece of N. Our interest rate R is going to be 4% or in other words, 0 0.04. Our K is our compounding period and it's compounding per month. So that means it's 12 times per month. And so it looks like we're good to go now. And then N of course, oh, that's what we're trying to find. So draw a line, there's our appendix. And then we get N equal to the log of, and don't worry, log is just a button on your calculator. So the log is P sub N, which is we want it to grow to 10,000 from P sub zero, which is 6,000. All divided by K, which is 12 times log of 1 plus R over K, so 0 0.04 over 12. Okay, so we can go ahead and go to our calculator and let's go ahead and put in the numerator of log 10,000 divided by 6,000 divided by parenthesis 12 log per, uh, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12. Close the log and then close the denominator. Enter. So we will round it once again to the tenths place. So 0.79 is the test digit, it's above five, so 12.8 years. So um, Pat, well, I should say, it will take 12.8 years for the account to grow to $10,000. Okay, not too bad. So the formula itself is not bad. We're just plugging and chugging like usual. It's the scenario that always is the most important. So solving for an interest rate. So now what we're gonna be doing is solving for R. So we're gonna know how many years now how our loan is or, or how much we're, how long we're saving. Now we're gonna actually try to find how the rate. So the rate is a little bit more um, you know, involved. So if we go to the flow chart on the second page, the rates um, will only be through simple interest. So if we notice here for these scenarios here where you have compound interest, annuity, and paid annuity and loan, notice we only are gonna solve for time there. But if we wanted to solve for the rate, we'll have these two formulas for simple interest over time, okay? It just depends which ones we need. If they give us the ending amount, we'll use this one. And if they don't, then we can use that one. So let's go ahead and see. 
they give us the interest and they give us the original amount. So they don't give us some amount some years later. They just tell us that you, you're going to earn this much money in interest. You invested this much and then you're going to have it for 19.4 years. So notice they don't give us some ending amount. So we can use this first formula for simple interest here. And let me go ahead and cut it out. It's when they don't give us the interest amount that we have to use the other formula. But they gave us the interest amount, right? They said that I is equal to 1616.02. They said the original amount that you were investing was 1700 And the time it was in the account was 19.4 years. And then the rate, we don't know. And notice there's no log in this one. It's nice, right? <laughs> so the rate, again, is an interest rate. So it should be between 0 and 100% or 0 and 1, right? We shouldn't see something R like 5,000 because that's totally out, out there, right? So we are going to put 1616.02 all over the original amount on the investment, 1,700 times the time, 19.4. Okay, we can just do this simply in our calculator. So we'll have 1616.02 divided by parentheses, we have more than one thing in the denominator, 1700 times the time, 19.4. So I get 0 0.049. But remember, the rate is actually a percentage, so we'll move that percent over two times to the right, and we'll get 4.9%. So the simple interest rate for uh, an investment of 1700 over 19.4 years is about 5%. OK, you're like, I wish I could. All of those were like that, right? <laughs> So the last one is actually doesn't tell us interest, but it only tells us the ending amount and the original investment. So suppose you pay back 385 on a 375 loan. You had the loan for 45 days. What was your simple annual interest rate? So you can remember this in the very first section we did. And we said, oh, we can simple interest rate, we can play around with the variables. Well, um, we revisit this, right? And we have to make sure that if we have given a loan in days, but we want an annual interest rate, that's going to have to be days into years, right, somewhere. So they do give us an ending amount and a starting amount, and they do mention simple interest. So let's go ahead and go into finding a rate with simple interest with beginning and ending amounts. So one deposit um, over time, simple interest, finding for an ending amount and a beginning amount, we would use that. So let me cut it out. Since we're looking for interest, we're going to go ahead and use this formula here. Our ending amount was 375, uh, so sorry, 38. Uh, our ending amount was given to be 385, and the original amount on the loan was 375. And the number of years that went by, well, they didn't tell us the number of years. It's only been 45 days. But if it's been 45 days, what is that in terms of years? Well, 45 days is equal to 45 out of 365 days per year. So it's 45 per 365 years. But we just have to make sure to divide that time by 365 if our time is given in days. OK, so here, the rate, again, is going to be a percent. So I should expect the ending number to be between 0 and 1. So let me go ahead and subtract 385 minus 375, all divided by 
P sub 0, 375 times time, which is now in years, 45 per 365. This is really important right here. Okay, so when you put it in the calculator, make sure you put parentheses around the numerator and denominator. And I'm expecting a number again between 0 and 1. So parenthesis 385 minus 375. Now I know you can do that in your head, but it's good to just put everything in the calculator. Um, divided by the denominator, parenthesis, right? 375 times 45 divided by 365. And then close the denominator with the parenthesis and hit enter. So we get point um, 216. Um, and I'll go ahead and round the percentage to the tens place. So right now it's rounded to the thousands place, but if you notice, if I make it a percentage, my percentage will now be 21.6%. So the nearest 1% decimal of a percent, right? Okay, so again, once again, the goal for this section and all the sections, right, is always to determine the scenario. And you're always going to determine whether it's one deposit, many deposits, many payments, many withdrawals. And please use this flow chart that's in the back of chapter, uh, in the chapter seven folder, where it tells us that, um, each scenario and if you go here it can give you the amounts or the payments or the withdrawal or the deposits the D's right I have both there for you and in with simple interest and compounding interest I have those formulas here so you can let me zoom in so you could see them closer so they're really nicely done and it's really easy it's all the formulas in one place and then when you're using 7.7, .7, solving for the time or the rate, you can use the second page here. And I'll just zoom in. And remember that log is just a log button on your calculator. If you want to know all about logs and all their theories, I am more than happy to send you some <laughs> language on that. And we can talk about that math concept. But that's, that's really just... Um, this chapter in a nutshell is all in these two um, pages of the flowcharts.